we've worked in this experimental area over the last uh, five years and we've uh, worked on different designs of nest sites, we've monitored the occupancy rates, the breeding success and uh, post-fledging survival of chicks in areas with different uh, prey availability. And using this uh, experimental data, we've been able to model, um, predict uh, population uh, sizes that we can be achieved through an artificial nest project on a much larger scale. So this year, in 2010, we've embarked on this large-scale project and uh, in the process of erecting 5,000 nests across uh, the steppe areas of central Mongolia. Mongolian government has a trade in uh, wild saker falcons. They uh, trap and sell wild saker falcons to uh, Arabian falconers. One of the problems is that there's no real way that Mongolia has been able to demonstrate that this trade is sustainable and that it doesn't have any detrimental impact on the population, uh, wild population of saker falcons. So our work has uh, been established to uh, increase the breeding population of saker falcons in nest site limited areas and to main, make sure that the trade in saker falcons is demonstrably sustainable. So we have put artificial nests in areas where there were no saker falcons before and created new breeding populations in nest site limited areas. And this is a saker falcon. Beautiful birds. In Mongolia there's lots of different types of habitat but there's also a lot of flat land and where the flatland is, there's lots of birds, but they've got nowhere to breed. So what we are trying to do is to put up 5,000 of these artificial nests, and I've got to do it by the end of 2010. We need to buy 20,000 nuts and bolts, 2,500 barrels, 800 bags of cement, and 555 square metres of plate. We buy all this in Mongolia so that all the money goes back into the Mongolian coffers. This is our workshop in Bayan, where we make all the barrels. We have five workers working here at the moment. They work here in the mornings from about nine o'clock in the morning till about six o'clock at night, making barrels, nest boxes. They cut the barrels in half with surface saws and put tops on top of them. And then put crowns on the top. And then they take the pipes and weld them together. We have been engineering We'd like to talk to you about the benefits of the project for conservation and also the benefits of the project for people in your sum, for the communities. Avoid the road. Avoid uh, as far as possible from okay. the road. And yep. then we'll do that and then 50 in this, this area. 50 is Five hours. Five hours with load. Okay. CITES, that is the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, 
has recognised that this is a potential sustainable use of a wildlife resource. Um, and that is quite a big breakthrough. It's not like a crocodile farm. These birds here are completely wild birds. All we're doing is providing them with a nest to create a population. As fast as we can put barrels up, as falcons are coming along and occupying them. And that's great. It's showing that the one thing that they are needing in this very open steppe environment is their uh, nest sites. Provide the nest sites and you'll get falcons like these young ones here. And this is a new resource and a sustainable resource. Exactly 1,000 1, gram minus 70. That's 930. 930. <laughs> Except the problem for um, this number of population of sacred falcon in Mongolia. That's why we put uh, we erect uh, lots of artificial nests like uh, like this design. This is the good for sakers. At the moment, four different species of the birds nested in our artificial nests. This, the first sacred falcon and ravens and upland buzzards and also common kestrel. Uh, there are lots of food supply, which is uh, the brown wool and the gerbils and the lots of pestilence, Mongolian lark and horned larks. This year, the more than 80 pairs of common kestrel nested and uh, 15 pairs of sacred falcon nested also. And about to 25 pairs of the often buzzard and 10 pairs of raven nested in, in Skrid this year. This is the big number for this grid. We've found uh, the information that we need to know in terms of um, what types of nest sites the sakers require, um, how many young we can expect to produce from these nests, and now we've moved on to the implementation phase, the, the uh, management of the, the population, and this is the next step that we're taking now. What we're showing is that we can do research on a species, we can find out things about it, but we don't just stop there. The whole point of the research is to find the information that we need to manage the species. After all, if you put a tag on one of these birds, it's not helping the bird. But it is giving us an insight into what the bird is doing and what it needs. And then we're moving on to the exciting phase of management. And this is management into a population in which we actually have to prove that what we learned in our research is true in reality. We should get at least 10% uh, of these nests occupied by breeding saker falcons. That's around 500 breeding pairs of saker falcons in, uh, within the next three years. It's a project which has got a very definite, tangible um, end point with a conservation benefit. You can physically see the population increasing. You know that you've created these new breeding birds. So there is a real tangible uh, endpoint which is very satisfying for this sort of project. You can see the end result. <laughs> 